everyone, how's it going? Hope you are well. So I'm really excited about today's video because I'm gonna talk about my work from home desk setup for software engineers. A lot of software engineers and tech industry folks have moved from working in the office to their at-home desk setup. So today I wanted to talk to you about my own. And for those of you who are new here, hi, welcome. My name's Mayuko and on this channel we talk about the tech industry, careers in tech, and also just lifestyle things as well. So make sure to check out the rest of my channel and consider subscribing. I did a video about my desk setup last year, but it's changed a tiny bit and so I want to talk about all the upgrades and give you an overview of everything. So you might be watching this video for some inspiration or just to shop around different options. And so in order to do that, I've invited my friend Jossie to talk about his desk setup as well. What is going on everyone? My name is Jossie Lin Jay. Thank you Mayuko for having me on your channel where I get a chance to share my setup as a software engineer, software developer as well. On my channel, I make similar content. Remember, day in the life of a software engineer. I also make content about my experiences as a computer science major, along with you know currently working as a front end dev, along with my full stack experience. In this video, we're gonna talk about half of our desk setups. The other half is gonna be in a video on his channel, so make sure to check that out. So without further ado, let's do this thing. So for my desk, I have the Jarvis standing desk from Foley. In my previous job, I was given a standing desk and I loved using it. Having the option to sit and stand throughout the workday just really gave me that level of flexibility and kind of kept me moving throughout the day. Because as you know, as developers, we spend so much time at our desks. And so having something that allows me to move freely and be flexible has really been a major add to my life. And if you're wondering, yes, I do actually sit and stand throughout the day. I stand for about an hour and then I sit for about an hour and I just kind of go back and forth between the two. Like many standing desks, you can customize this one a ton. I got the 60 inch tabletop in bamboo with white legs. And I just really like the look of the bamboo tabletop too. It's just a really pretty color and it looks really nice. I got the programmable keypad just so that I make sure that I'm always standing at the right height and sitting at the right height and I'm not cheating on either. So my desk has evolved over the past year, year and a half because one, I've been making more content on YouTube along with working remotely for like seven or eight months. So I've made sure that my desk is not only ergonomic, but it's functional and it looks nice. It inspires me and motivates me to get whatever like work that I have to get done, but you don't wanna break the bank. So as you can probably tell, the items that I purchased for this desk setup are from Ikea. If we start with the countertop, I have a Erkbakken, I think that's how you pronounce it, Erkbakken countertop. It's 74 inches long. At first I thought it was gonna be too long, but trust me, it's the perfect length if you wanna have enough space, especially if you're someone like myself who has like a personal laptop, um, two work laptops, and maybe like an iPad, and you're using like a Bluetooth keyboard and monitor and like, you know, audio system, all those things add up and can take up a lot of your space, which is why I upgraded from that 40, like seven inch Linmon countertop that I got from Ikea. My desk setup is influenced from a more like modern Scandinavian design where it's very simple, minimal silhouettes. Also, we have white walls surrounding us everywhere in this apartment, which is also a pretty minimalistic apartment in terms of the design and the layout. So that was the main reason why I wanted to go with like a wooden countertop because I didn't like having a really white bland wall with like a white counter space. It just didn't feel right. Moving on to the drawers, the Alex drawers are great, especially if you're someone who's working from home or studying from home and you have like a lot of, you know, paperwork that you're keeping track of. I use a lot of these drawers to store a lot of the boxes and chargers that go to the devices that I'm not only using for my desk setup, but maybe accessories for like my iPad Pro, my laptop and my phone. We don't have a lot of closet space in this apartment. So being able to take advantage of having drawers underneath my countertop has made a huge difference. It's decluttered my space significantly. There are a few other things that I recommend everyone add to their desk setup. One are plants, especially if your desk is pretty minimal. Is that a fly that just went past? There are a couple things that I do recommend everyone add to their desk setup. And one are plants. Plants just add this sense of like 
peacefulness and like serenity. Okay, I'm getting a little deep. Plants just make your desk feel a little bit more fresh and it doesn't seem so like sterile, along with the fact that it adds a pop of color, you know, a little contrast. The next thing that I recommend having is a desk pad. The reason being is because one, it adds another pop of color, maybe like a contrast, like a neutral color like gray would make your desk pop a little bit more. I don't know, it's great for B-roll too. And it keeps your desk a lot more clean. I mean, I don't spill like drinks on my desk that often, but when I have, it's prevented like the countertop from getting ruined. So for monitors, I opted for a two monitor setup. So these are the two same monitors that I did in my desk setup video linked right here in this card. And the main difference is that now they're both horizontal and I opted for a monitor stand. I prefer having two monitors over one because then I can pin windows to more corners and it feels like I've just got more space. And so a lot of times I'll have my coding IDE on one monitor and then Stack Overflow and Slack on the other. And also sometimes I run two computers at once and so having two monitors, one for each computer has been really handy. And monitor size wise, I found that 27 inch is a perfect size for me. It's bigger than my laptop screen, but not so big that I feel like I'm part of the computer. The monitor, it's, it's everything in terms of aesthetics. I thought that a dual display was best for me because I do a lot of CSS. You could imagine that my files can be really long and I'm writing styles for so many different pages on a website. So you'll see a lot of front end developers flipping their monitor vertically, which seems really weird, but it can help with productivity, especially when you have like a file that's over a thousand lines of code. But one thing I noticed is that I never actually flip my monitor vertically. So I've really been loving this 34 inch Ergo QHD ultra wide monitor it has a 21 by nine ratio, allowing me to be as productive as possible. But with the ultra wide, I can take advantage of that, which is really helpful for when I'm multitasking with like Stack Overflow, Visual Studio Code, along with looking at what my web application looks like in browser, which is the big difference between mobile dev and like front end development with building websites. When you're building an application with web, you really need like a whole nother screen to actually look at your application. You wanna make sure that it's responsive. That's why it was important for me to actually have an ultra wide opposed to a dual monitor display. A few features I loved about this ultra wide monitor is the display, which is at 3440 by 1440. I'm able to extend, retract, swivel, change the height and the tilt of the monitor along with a three side virtually borderless design which is really minimal and doesn't distract me at all of course it has the 99 percent color gamut amd free sync which is something you'd really appreciate as someone who games using your monitor along with it being color calibrated which is something i actually really need considering the fact that my main personal laptop which is my dell xps 15 is oversaturated For my keyboard, I use a developer favorite. This is the MX Keys. The one that I have specifically is for Mac, and so the keyboard layout is specifically designed for a Mac layout. I really, really like this keyboard. The build quality is really great. It doesn't feel too plasticky, and it's got some really neat features. One of my favorite parts is that it glows right when you approach it, which kind of feels like a nice, warm welcome from my keyboard to my desk. And the best part about it, like most Logitech keyboards, is that you can program the keys to your liking. And so I have specific key bindings, mostly for applications that I run, like my coding IDE, like my video editing software, Offer, and it's made my workflow just so much more efficient and smooth. This paired with a mouse that I talk about in Jossie's video are just, I feel like every developer needs them. It's just so nice. It really does help with your workflow and so I recommend it to like everybody. And although it's not a split ergonomic keyboard, I find that it suits my needs. But for those long coding sessions, sometimes I will whip out my ergonomic keyboard from Logitech. Your typing experience is important and I've tried a few different ways to improve my typing experience and the easiest way to do that is by trying out different keyboards. The Ergo K860 keyboard has been my go-to when programming because of the split egronomic layout which improves the typing posture and reduces muscle strain. As a software developer, you can imagine how much more time we spend typing and having a more relaxed experience 
for my shoulders, wrists, and forearms, which has made my experience working for longer time frames better. At first, the design of this keyboard looked a bit unconventional, but as soon as I started typing, the layout actually felt more natural and comfortable than a more normal layout. So I'm someone that loves listening to music while I work. It gives me the energy that I need, it helps me get into the flow, and most of the time I'm listening to chill hop lo-fi. Sometimes I listen to like classical music, sometimes I listen to just like chill, nice music to work to. Other times I just listen to like certified bops because I just need to get my energy up. Regardless, the main way that I listen to my music is through these Bose speakers. Now I think this is kind of one of like the best parts about working from home because you can actually play your music through speakers and through your headphones because you're not in an office. And so I really like these speakers. The sound is much, much higher quality than the sound that comes from my MacBook Pro and everything is really crisp and things can get really loud. It connects using an aux cable and so I can just plug it in directly to my Mac super easily. I actually used to have a really old, old version of these and I did wonder whether I really needed them when I bought them, but now I'm just so glad that I did. I do use headphones on occasion still, like I'll use my AirPods when I'm on a phone call or something, but these Bose speakers are my main. Having a nice set of speakers can actually make a huge difference. Like I didn't realize that until I got my first pair of like legit speakers, basically Bluetooth speakers over $50. I've been using the Logi Z207 speakers for the past month or so. And honestly, they look even better in person. The sound quality is exceptional. The only complaint is that it's a little bit too much bass, but when consuming content, it sounds great. These Logi Z207 speakers provide a rich stereo sound that does really fill the room. You can easily pair these speakers with multiple devices, and I really like the easy controls, making it simple to turn them on and off and connect them to Bluetooth. And that's it. Make sure to check out the other half of this video on Jossie's channel where we talk about computers, mice, lighting, and chairs. I really hope you like this video and it gives you a little bit of ideas and inspiration for how you can set up your work from home desk setup as well. And just definitely make sure to go check out Jossie's channel. His stuff is so good, it's aesthetic. He's got a lot of great advice videos out there too. And so everything is gonna be linked in the description box down below. Leave a comment down below and let us know what are important parts of your work from home desk setup. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos like this from me and I will see you next time. Bye.